Hello, history enthusiasts, time travelers, and knowledge seekers. Welcome to another journey back in time here on Backdrop History. Introduction The space race was a defining era in human history, characterized by fierce competition and scientific exploration between two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. This historical account delves into the monumental event of the moon landing and its aftermath, showcasing how space exploration transformed the way we perceive our place in the universe. This remarkable journey to the stars represented the culmination of decades of technological advancements, human determination, and the indomitable spirit of exploration. Chapter 1, The Space Race Begins the genesis of the space race is intrinsically tied to the political and technological aftermath of World War II. As the war reached its conclusion in 1945, the world bore witness to the true destructive capabilities of advanced technology in the form of nuclear weapons. But another, more nascent technology, rocketry, also caught the attention of global powers. Both the United States and the Soviet Union realized the potential applications of rocket technology, not just for war, but for the new frontier of space exploration. In the waning years of World War II, Germany had made significant strides in rocket technology under the guidance of Wernher von Braun, a brilliant and ambitious engineer. The most notorious example of this was the V-2 rocket. The V-2, short for Vergeltunswaffe II, was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile and the progenitor of all modern rockets. The V-2 rocket was a powerful weapon, capable of carrying a one-ton warhead at supersonic speeds, and it was used to deadly effect on Allied cities. However, von Braun's vision extended far beyond creating weapons of war. He dreamed of using rocket technology for space exploration, once famously saying, the rocket will free man from his remaining chains, the chains of gravity which still tie him to this planet. Von Braun's scientific prowess and far-reaching vision made him a key figure in the budding field of rocket technology. Following Germany's defeat in 1945, both the United States and the Soviet Union were eager to secure the services of German scientists to aid in their own technological pursuits. This resulted in Operation Paperclip, a secret program by the United States to recruit German scientists, engineers, and technicians, including von Braun and his V-2 rocket team, to work on American aerospace projects. Simultaneously, the Soviet Union also made efforts to harness the scientific knowledge left behind by the defeated Third Reich. The USSR launched Operation Osoaviakim, a comparable program to Operation Paperclip, and forcibly moved more than 2,200 German specialists and their families to the Soviet Union in October 1946. Chapter 2, Sputnik and the Cold War the significance of October 4, 1957, cannot be overstated in the annals of space exploration. It was on this day that the Soviet Union launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, into space. This unassuming, spherical device, measuring only 23 inches in diameter and emitting a regular beeping signal, changed the course of history. Sputnik 1 was an extraordinary technological accomplishment and symbol of Soviet prowess. It represented a direct challenge to the United States in terms of technological supremacy and military might. The fact that the USSR had successfully placed a man-made object into orbit sent shockwaves throughout the world, and particularly within the United States, sparking what would become known as the Sputnik Crisis. The shock and alarm in the U.S. were not unwarranted. Until the launch of Sputnik 1, the notion of space exploration was largely relegated to the realm of science fiction. The successful launch shattered this illusion and marked the dawn of a new era. Moreover, it brought with it a sobering realization, if the Soviet Union could launch a satellite into space, it was conceivable that they could also launch ballistic missiles that could reach any part of the globe. This revelation had profound implications for American defense strategy and its perceived international standing. 
The Cold War was as much a war of ideologies as it was about technological and military prowess. The perceived Soviet lead in space technology was seen as a direct threat to the United States' position as a global leader and the ideological battle against communism. As a result, the launch of Sputnik 1 spurred an immense push for advancements in space exploration within the United States. The American government, industry, and scientific community mobilized on a scale similar to the efforts during World War II. The sense of urgency was palpable, and the drive to catch up and ultimately surpass the Soviet Union in space exploration was fueled by a fear of falling behind both technologically and militarily. Public and private investments in education, particularly in science and engineering, increased dramatically in an effort to close the technological gap. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, was established on July 29, 1958, as a direct response to Sputnik's launch. The U.S. government also initiated Project Vanguard and Explorer, its first successful satellite launched on January 31, 1958, barely four months after Sputnik. Chapter 3, Project Mercury In the aftermath of Sputnik's launch, the United States government swiftly realized the strategic significance of mastering space travel. The shock of Sputnik spurred a fervor for space exploration and a profound urgency to ensure that America was not left behind in this new frontier. This led to the creation of NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, on July 29, 1958, an agency dedicated to advancing America's efforts in space exploration. NASA's first major endeavor in manned spaceflight was Project Mercury. Announced to the public on December 17, 1958, its overarching objective was to put a man in space and return him safely to Earth, a lofty and ambitious goal at the time. A key element of the project was not only to catch up with the Soviet Union but also to project American technological and ideological superiority globally. Project Mercury was a multidimensional endeavor. It involved technological developments, astronaut selection and training, and comprehensive missions to gather the necessary data to send a human being into space and return them safely. Each step was meticulously designed and implemented, offering a vivid demonstration of what can be achieved with national will and resources. The astronaut selection process, named Man in Space Soonest, Miss, was initiated in 1958 and culminated with the selection of the Mercury 7, Alan Shepard, Gus Grissom, John Glenn, Scott Carpenter, Wally Skira, Gordon Cooper, and Deke Slayton. These men, selected from a pool of 500 military test pilots, became national heroes and the face of America's space exploration efforts. On May 5, 1961, Alan Shepard became the first American in space, aboard the Freedom 7 spacecraft. His suborbital flight lasted 15 minutes and reached an altitude of 116 miles, a momentous achievement for the United States. However, the Soviets had already reached this milestone a few weeks earlier. On April 12, 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit the Earth, aboard the Vostok 1. This achievement not only beat the United States to the punch but also demonstrated that the Soviet Union was capable of sending a human into orbit and returning them safely, an even more complex task than a suborbital flight. Gagarin's 108-minute orbital flight around the Earth marked a significant victory for the USSR in the space race. Chapter 4 The Goal of Landing a Man on the Moon On May 25, 1961, before a joint session of Congress, U.S. President John F. Kennedy made an audacious proclamation that would forever shape the course of human history. He set a national goal, before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. It was a clear response to Soviet space achievements and a declaration of intent that the United States would not cede the realm of space exploration to its Cold War adversary. Kennedy's speech and the national goal he announced came at a critical juncture in the space race. 
Despite the successes of Project Mercury, the United States was still perceived as trailing the Soviet Union in space exploration. Kennedy's statement was not only a bid to rally national support but also a diplomatic tool to demonstrate American determination and resilience on the global stage. The president's challenge was underpinned by two key elements, the appeal to American patriotism and the spirit of exploration, and the tangible fear of the Soviet Union establishing dominance in space. Kennedy acknowledged the enormity of the task ahead, admitting that the goal would require significant resources and the collective will of the nation to achieve. It was an ambitious commitment, but one that encapsulated the American spirit and ethos of the era. The moon landing goal ignited a sense of urgency and unity in the United States, one that transcended the division of the Cold War and aimed to explore the common frontier of space. It set the stage for the Apollo program, the most ambitious and costly project in the history of space exploration. Named after Apollo, the Greek god of the sun, it reflected the aspiration and optimism of the era. The Apollo program marked a dramatic shift in the scale and scope of space exploration. It wasn't merely a continuation of Project Mercury, instead, it expanded the technological requirements, human resources, and financial commitments necessary for success. It involved the development of a whole new suite of technologies, including the Saturn V rocket, the largest and most powerful rocket ever built, capable of reaching the moon. Simultaneously, the Apollo program necessitated a national commitment to science education, aerospace research, and infrastructure development. Its impacts were felt far beyond the confines of NASA, influencing industries, universities, and the broader economy. Chapter 5, The Apollo Program The Apollo Program, initiated by NASA in 1961 following President Kennedy's audacious moon landing goal, was the most ambitious undertaking in the history of human space exploration. Designed to land a man on the moon and return him safely to the Earth, it brought together the collective efforts of scientists, engineers, astronauts, and many others. The program not only marked a significant advance in human exploration but also proved to be a catalyst for advancements in technology, science, and engineering. Unfortunately, the Apollo program was marked by early tragedy. On January 27, 1967, during a launch rehearsal test for Apollo 1, a fire broke out in the command module, killing all three crew members, Virgilite Gus Grissom, Edward H. White II, and Roger B. Chafee. The disaster shocked the nation and led to an extensive investigation, resulting in major redesigns to the Apollo spacecraft and a broad reassessment of NASA's practices and procedures. Despite the immense grief and technical setbacks, NASA and the Apollo program endured, epitomizing the resilience and resolve of the American space endeavor. In the aftermath of the Apollo 1 disaster, each subsequent Apollo mission represented significant strides towards the ultimate goal of lunar landing. Apollo 7, the first manned mission of the program, tested the redesigned command module in Earth orbit in October 1968. The mission demonstrated that the redesigned Apollo spacecraft was safe for crewed flight, a crucial step toward lunar missions. Apollo 8, the second manned mission, made history when astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and William Anders became the first humans to leave Earth orbit, reach the moon, orbit it, and return. The mission, launched on December 21, 1968, tested the critical maneuvers required for a moon landing. The iconic Earthrise image captured by Apollo 8 offered a profound new perspective on our home planet and remains one of the most famous photographs taken during all of the Apollo missions. Apollo 9 and Apollo 10 further tested the lunar module and executed a dress rehearsal for the moon landing, respectively, refining the procedures and systems necessary for the upcoming lunar landing mission. Each mission served as a crucial step building up the knowledge, experience, and confidence necessary for the historic Apollo 11 mission. Chapter 6, Apollo 11 and the Moon Landing 
On July 20, 1969, the world watched in awe as the United States achieved the seemingly impossible feat landing humans on the moon. Apollo 11, the spaceflight that accomplished this monumental task, etched a new chapter in human history and brought an extraordinary triumph for the United States. The mission was manned by three astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Edwin E. Buzz Aldrin Jr., and Michael Collins. Armstrong, an experienced test pilot, and Aldrin, a fighter pilot and mechanical engineer, were designated to land the Lunar Module Eagle on the moon's surface. Collins, also an accomplished test pilot, was tasked with piloting the command module Columbia in lunar orbit. Launched from Kennedy Space Center on July 16, 1969, atop the formidable Saturn V rocket, Apollo 11 embarked on its historic journey to the moon. After a voyage of approximately 240,000 miles that lasted about 76 hours, the Apollo spacecraft entered lunar orbit. On July 20, the Lunar Module Eagle, with Armstrong and Aldrin on board, separated from the command module for its descent to the lunar surface. During this intense and critical phase, the astronauts had to overcome several challenges, including a series of computer alarms and the realization that their planned landing site was strewn with boulders. Armstrong manually piloted the lunar module to a safe landing area, famously reporting to Mission Control in Houston, the Eagle has landed. After landing, Armstrong emerged from the Eagle and became the first human to set foot on the lunar surface. His famous words, that's one small step for, a, man, one giant leap for mankind, broadcasted live to millions watching back on Earth, captured the significance of the moment and have since resonated throughout history. Buzz Aldrin joined him shortly after, becoming the second man to walk on the moon. While Armstrong and Aldrin explored the lunar surface, collecting samples, and conducting experiments, Collins orbited above in the command module. Though often described as the loneliest man in history, Collins played a crucial role in the mission, keeping the command module in the correct orbit and ready for his crewmate's return. After spending 21.5 hours on the lunar surface, the astronauts and the Eagle reconnected with Collins in the command module on July 21 and began their return to Earth, splashing down safely in the Pacific Ocean on July 24. Chapter 7 – The Later Apollo Missions and the End of the Space Race Following the successful landing of Apollo 11, the Apollo program continued to push the boundaries of human exploration with six more missions launched between 1969 and 1972. The enduring legacy of these later Apollo missions lies not just in their technological achievements, but also in their contributions to scientific understanding and international cooperation. Apollo 12 the second mission to land on the moon, successfully demonstrated precision landing as it set down near the Surveyor 3 unmanned probe in November 1969. Apollo 13, launched in April 1970, was intended to be the third landing, however, the mission had to be aborted after an oxygen tank in the service module exploded. The safe return of the crew remains a testament to the ingenuity and cool under pressure of both the astronauts and mission control. The subsequent missions, Apollo 14 through 17, not only landed on the moon but extended the duration of lunar surface exploration, conducted extensive geological surveys, and deployed more scientific experiments. Notably, the Apollo 15 mission marked the first use of the lunar roving vehicle, and Apollo 17, the final Apollo mission, featured the first trained geologist, Harrison Schmidt, to walk on the moon. As the Apollo program wound down, so did the competitive fervor of the space race. The culmination of the era came with the Apollo-Soyuz test project, ASTP, launched in July 1975. The mission was the first international human spaceflight mission, which saw an American Apollo module dock with a Soviet Soyuz spacecraft. The ASTP, in its essence, was a diplomatic gesture meant to symbolize détente between the two superpowers and marked a transition from competition to cooperation in space exploration. 
the symbolic handshake in space between American astronaut Thomas P. Stafford and Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov underscored this historic moment, encapsulating the end of the space race era and the beginning of a new era of international cooperation in space exploration. Chapter 8, Beyond the Moon Landing As the space race gave way to a new era, space exploration evolved from a symbol of Cold War competition to a field of cooperative international ventures and scientific advancements. The two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, now sought to apply and expand their knowledge for broader scientific and practical applications. In the United States, the post-Apollo era saw the advent of the Space Shuttle program. Developed by NASA and operational from 1981 to 2011, the Space Shuttle was designed as a reusable vehicle to facilitate frequent missions to space. With its ability to land back on Earth like an airplane, the Space Shuttle represented a significant advancement in spacecraft technology. The Shuttle program led to numerous achievements, including the launch and repair of the Hubble Space Telescope, an instrument that has fundamentally transformed our understanding of the universe. Moreover, the Shuttle was integral to the construction and maintenance of the International Space Station ISS. The ISS, a multinational cooperative project involving the United States, Russia, Canada, Europe, and Japan, has served as a continuous human-occupied research laboratory in space since November 2000. Its construction marked the dawn of a new age of international collaboration in space exploration. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union continued its own efforts in space exploration. In the decades following the moon landing, the Soviets launched a series of space stations under the Salyut and later, the Mir programs. Salyut 1, launched in 1971, was the world's first space station. The Mir space station, operational from 1986 to 2001, set several records for human spaceflight duration and served as a testament to the longevity and durability of such habitats in space. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Russia remained a major player in space exploration. In fact, Russian Soyuz spacecraft became the primary vehicles for crewed flights to and from the ISS following the end of the Space Shuttle program in 2011. Chapter 9, The New Space Age As we traverse the early decades of the 21st century, we find ourselves in a new era of space exploration often referred to as the New Space Age. This period is marked by an unprecedented shift away from space exploration being the sole preserve of national agencies towards increasing participation from private companies. Visionary entrepreneurs and corporations are becoming major players in the field of space exploration and transportation, bringing with them fresh perspectives, ambitious goals, and new technologies that promise to redefine our relationship with space. Two of the most prominent players in this new space age are SpaceX, founded by Elon Musk, and Blue Origin, founded by Jeff Bezos. Both companies have taken on ambitious objectives and are pioneering technologies that are changing the economics and feasibility of space exploration. SpaceX, established in 2002 with the ultimate goal of making life multiplanetary, has been a disruptive force in the industry. The company has revolutionized space travel with its reusable rocket technology, dramatically reducing the cost of reaching space. SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets are capable of delivering payload to orbit and then returning to land vertically, a feat once thought to be the stuff of science fiction. This achievement has already had a profound impact on the economics of space travel and promises to continue driving costs down in the future. SpaceX's achievements are not limited to technological innovations. In May 2020, the company launched NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley to the International Space Station, marking the first time a commercial company has sent humans into orbit. Moreover, SpaceX's Starship, a spacecraft currently under development, is intended to carry humans to Mars, embodying Musk's vision of making humans a multiplanetary species. 
Meanwhile, Blue Origin, under the motto Gradatum Ferociter or Step by Step, ferociously, has been steadily working on its own technologies and ambitions for space exploration. The company's new Shepard suborbital vehicle has already successfully demonstrated vertical takeoff and landing capabilities, and its new Glenn rocket is designed to deliver payloads to orbit. Moreover, Blue Origin has proposed the Blue Moon Lander as a contender for NASA's Artemis program, aiming to return humans to the moon by 2024. Beyond SpaceX and Blue Origin, many other companies such as Virgin Galactic, Rocket Lab, and others are contributing to this new space age. The increased competition and cooperation between these private companies and traditional national agencies are fueling a rapid acceleration in space-related technologies and capabilities. This new space age, underpinned by both competition and collaboration between public and private entities, holds promise for extraordinary leaps in space exploration. With plans for lunar bases, manned missions to Mars, and even space tourism, the goals of this era reach far beyond those of the original space race. Chapter 10, Conclusion, Lessons and Legacies The space race, with its origins rooted in geopolitical rivalry and the quest for technological superiority, dramatically reshaped the second half of the 20th century. The United States and the Soviet Union, the two major superpowers of the time, embarked on a monumental journey that brought humanity into the cosmos and forever altered our perception of our place in the universe. This competition produced technological innovations at a breathtaking pace. The rapid development of rocketry and spacecraft led directly to the advent of satellite technology, which has wide-ranging implications for our world from communications to weather forecasting to global navigation. The scientific insights gained from space exploration have fundamentally enriched our understanding of the universe, from the nature of the moon's surface to the existence of galaxies far beyond our own. Beyond the realms of science and technology, the space race had profound socio-political implications. At its heart, it was a contest of ideologies, a demonstration of the technological might and organizational capacities of the capitalist and communist systems. The successes and failures of both nations on the stage of space were watched and interpreted by millions around the globe, influencing the dynamic of the Cold War and the shifting balance of power. Yet, for all its rivalry and competition, the space race also sparked a profound sense of unity. The iconic image of Earth captured during the Apollo 8 mission, a vibrant blue sphere hanging in the vast blackness of space, became a symbol of our shared home. The international collaborations that emerged towards the end of the space race, such as the Apollo-Soyuz mission, signaled a shift from competition to cooperation in space. The Apollo moon landing in 1969 stands as a testament to the power of human ingenuity and the enduring spirit of exploration. It embodied a milestone not just for the United States, but for all of humanity. The sight of a human setting foot on another celestial body, transmitted to television screens worldwide, was a powerful affirmation of the potential of humans to overcome boundaries and venture into the unknown. As we navigate the complexities of the new space age, the lessons from the space race remain relevant. The competition between private companies mirrors the national competition of the mid-20th century, driving rapid innovation and advancements. Yet, just as before, the necessity for cooperation is paramount, as no single entity can fully tackle the myriad challenges that come with venturing deeper into space. More information and facts. Part 1, Individuals Behind the Scenes, Unsung Heroes of the Space Race. The space race was not merely a competition between nations, it was a monumental human endeavor fueled by the relentless efforts of countless scientists, engineers, and other professionals working behind the scenes. This narrative often focuses on the astronauts, political leaders, and famed scientists, yet there were many more individuals whose contributions were integral to the successes of the space race. Here we shed light on some of these unsung heroes, whose roles, though less publicized, 
were nevertheless crucial. In the United States, one such individual was Katherine Johnson. An African-American mathematician working at NASA, Johnson was a pioneer in more ways than one. Her mathematical prowess played a critical role in the success of several manned missions. She calculated the trajectory for Alan Shepard's 1961 spaceflight America's First. Later, she verified the calculations for the flight path of the Apollo 11 mission, which took the first humans to the moon. Despite working in an era of racial and gender discrimination, Johnson's contributions were eventually recognized. She was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2015, and her story was popularized in the 2016 film Hidden Figures. Another key figure was Dr. Robert H. Goddard, an American physicist and inventor often referred to as the father of modern rocketry. Goddard's work in the early 20th century laid the groundwork for the technological advancements that made space travel possible. Although his work was often criticized and misunderstood during his lifetime, his research in liquid-fueled rockets and his development of a method to stabilize flight are fundamental to the technology used in the space race and beyond. On the Soviet side, Sergei Korolev stands as an influential yet largely unsung figure. As chief designer and engineer for the Soviet space program, Korolev was the driving force behind many of the Soviet Union's early triumphs in space, including the launch of Sputnik and the first human spaceflight by Yuri Gagarin. Despite his pivotal role, Korolev's identity was kept a state secret until after his death, as the Soviet government feared he could be a target for assassination. Only posthumously was his immense contribution to space exploration truly recognized. Valentin Blushko was another key figure in the Soviet space program. As a leading rocket engine designer, Blushko played a significant role in the development of the engines that powered the rockets used in the first manned spaceflights. Despite ideological clashes with Korolev, their combined efforts propelled the Soviet Union to many of its early achievements in space exploration. Even the realm of science fiction played a role in the space race. Writers such as Arthur C. Clarke, Isaac Asimov, and Robert A. Heinlein captured the public imagination with visions of space travel and interplanetary civilizations, inspiring generations of scientists, engineers, and astronauts. Clarke's communication satellite concept, presented in a 1945 paper, predated and potentially inspired real-world geostationary satellites. Part 2, The Cultural Impact, An Era Defined by the Stars The space race was not an isolated technological competition, it was a cultural phenomenon that had far-reaching implications beyond the fields of science and engineering. The quest to reach the stars ignited the collective imagination, deeply influencing the arts, literature, and popular culture. It transformed society's perception of the universe and mankind's place within it. The fascination with space exploration led to a surge in science fiction during the 1960s and 1970s. The genre's popularity soared as authors, filmmakers, and television producers sought to mirror, interpret, and sometimes criticize the space race. Often, their works blended a sense of awe and wonder with the stark realities and ethical dilemmas of space exploration. One of the most iconic cultural products of this period was the television series Star Trek, 1966-1969, created by Gene Roddenberry. The show presented a future where humanity had not only mastered space travel but also united in harmony, transcending Earth's racial and national divides. The multicultural crew of the Starship Enterprise embodied an optimistic vision of a post-racial future, providing a stark contrast to the Cold War tensions of the era. It also highlighted the exploration and discovery aspect of space travel, fostering a sense of curiosity about the unknown. Another significant cultural product was Stanley Kubrick's film 2001, A Space Odyssey, 1968 developed concurrently with Arthur C. Clarke's novel of the same name. The movie became an icon of the genre, 
renowned for its realism and the philosophical questions it raised. It provided a profound reflection on human evolution, artificial intelligence, and the possibility of extraterrestrial life, themes that are still central to discussions about space exploration. Beyond television and film, the space race also influenced music, from David Bowie's Space Oddity, 1969, a melancholic reflection on space travel, to Elton John's Rocket Man, 1972, which humanized astronauts by emphasizing their distance from home and the ordinary life they left behind. The space race also stimulated the production and popularity of science and technology toys. Scale models of rockets, astronaut action figures, and space-themed board games became part of children's play, mirroring society's fascination with space and encouraging the next generation to dream of the stars. Educationally, the space race spurred an interest in the STEM fields. Space-themed literature aimed at children and young adults proliferated, encouraging a new generation to aspire to careers in science, engineering, and technology. In a broader societal context, the space race also played a role in advancing civil rights. The image of Earth seen from space, popularized through photographs taken during the Apollo missions, emphasized the interconnectedness and shared destiny of all people. This perspective had a profound impact, reinforcing environmental consciousness and promoting global unity. Part 3, The Human Aspect, Astronauts' Experiences and Beyond While the space race was fundamentally a technological and geopolitical contest, it was also undeniably a human drama. The astronauts who ventured into the unknown vastness of space were not merely passive passengers, they were explorers in the truest sense, pushing the boundaries of human experience. To fully understand the space race, we must consider their experiences, the personal and psychological impacts of space travel, and the broader effects on their families and personal lives. For the astronauts, the path to space was demanding fraught with both physical and psychological challenges. They were selected from among the country's best pilots and subjected to rigorous training, designed not only to prepare them physically for the demands of space travel but also to equip them with the mental resilience to handle intense pressure and isolation. Tom Wolfe's The Right Stuff provides a compelling portrayal of the lives of the first seven American astronauts selected for Project Mercury. His vivid descriptions illuminate the challenging training, the internal competition, the constant pressure to succeed, and the risks involved. The astronauts were hailed as national heroes even before they went to space, their personal lives often scrutinized by the media. Yet, behind the scenes, they grappled with the realities of potentially fatal missions. Astronaut Michael Collins' Carrying the Fire offers a first-hand account of the space experience. As the Apollo 11 command module pilot, Collins orbited the moon alone while his colleagues, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, made the first man lunar landing. His memoir is renowned for its honesty, wit, and insight, painting a multifaceted picture of an astronaut's life from the profound awe of seeing Earth from space to the mundane realities of life inside a spacecraft. The psychological impacts of space travel were profound. Astronauts often spoke of a cognitive shift or the overview effect, a term coined by space philosopher Frank White. Viewing Earth from space, they saw a fragile, borderless world, inducing a sense of interconnectedness and a renewed responsibility for the planet. However, space travel also carried personal costs, affecting the astronauts' families. The long periods of training and the inherent danger put stress on their relationships. Many astronauts' marriages ended in divorce, and their children, while often proud, bore the brunt of their absences and the constant fear for their safety. The astronauts' return to Earth also presented challenges. After the fanfare subsided, many struggle to readjust to ordinary life. The question, what do you do after you've been to the moon, echoed the existential crisis some faced, having fulfilled a virtually unmatchable achievement relatively early in their lives. Part 4, The Global Perspective, Beyond the U.S.-Soviet Binary 
While the space race is often portrayed as a binary competition between the United States and the Soviet Union, a comprehensive view of the era must acknowledge the global interest in space exploration. This interest transcended the Cold War divide, as nations worldwide recognized the potential of space technology for national development, scientific advancement, and international prestige. Europe, for instance, took significant steps toward a collective space program. In 1962, European countries established the European Space Research Organization ESRO, and the European Launcher Development Organization ELDO, precursors to today's European Space Agency ESA. These collaborations aim to pool resources and technical expertise, acknowledging that single countries, aside from superpowers like the US and the Soviet Union, could hardly compete in the costly endeavor of space exploration. The ESA today stands as a testament to the success of these early endeavors, contributing to various missions like Mars Express and the Hubble Space Telescope. China also began its space program during the space race era. Though it was initially focused on missile development during the late 1950s, China soon shifted its attention to manned spaceflight. Chinese leader Mao Zedong, in 1967, announced Project 714, aiming to send a Chinese astronaut to space by 1973. However, due to political turmoil and economic difficulties, the project was cancelled in 1972. It wasn't until 2003 that China became the third country to send a human to space independently with its Shenzhou 5 mission. In the non-aligned world, space exploration was seen as a tool for development and a way to assert national sovereignty. India's space program, initiated under the leadership of Vikram Sarabhai in the 1960s, aimed to use space technology for national development. India focused on building satellites that could aid in weather forecasting, communication, and education. Today, the Indian Space Research Organization ISRO, is recognized globally, having launched a successful Mars Orbiter mission in 2014. Similarly, nations in the Middle East and Africa, though they did not have active space programs during the space race, have made significant strides in recent years. The United Arab Emirates, for example, launched the Mars mission Hope Probe in 2020, marking the Arab world's entry into interplanetary missions. It's also worth mentioning the role of international organizations in space exploration. The United Nations established the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space Capuos, in 1959, recognizing the importance of space and the need for its peaceful use. Capuos played a key role in formulating treaties and principles that govern space activities. Part 5 – The Ethical and Philosophical Implications – Humanity's New Frontier The space race, as a manifestation of human curiosity and technological prowess, inevitably forced society to grapple with a range of ethical and philosophical questions. As we reached for the stars, we were compelled to reconsider our place in the universe, reassess our responsibilities, and re-evaluate our ethical frameworks. One significant philosophical implication arose from the very experience of viewing Earth from space. Coined as the overview effect by space philosopher Frank White, this profound shift in cognitive perspective has been reported by numerous astronauts. Observing our planet as a tiny, fragile sphere in the vastness of space prompted a sense of interconnectedness and global responsibility. This perspective directly challenges ethnocentric and nationalistic views, urging a global and arguably more holistic outlook. However, this collective ownership of Earth's fate prompts ethical questions about our collective responsibility for space. Who does space belong to? Who has the right to exploit its resources? These are questions that have been the subject of intense debate. The Outer Space Treaty of 1967, the foundational framework of international space law, states that space should be the province of all mankind and prohibits national appropriation of celestial bodies. 
However, with the prospect of mining asteroids and other celestial bodies becoming more feasible, these principles are under scrutiny. There is a tension between space being the common heritage of humanity and the drive to exploit its resources for national or commercial gain. The potential discovery of extraterrestrial life also poses complex ethical questions. Should we attempt to make contact, and if so, how? What principles should guide our interactions? These questions force us to contemplate not only our place in the universe but also our responsibilities as potentially not the only sentient beings within it. Space exploration also prompts philosophical inquiries into the very essence of humanity. What drives us to explore, to push beyond our boundaries, to risk human lives in the pursuit of knowledge and discovery? This is a testament to our innate curiosity, our willingness to confront the unknown, and our collective striving for progress and understanding. Furthermore, as we move towards the prospect of colonizing other planets, we must grapple with questions about what kind of societies we wish to build. The tabula rasa of a new planet forces us to deliberate on our social, political, and economic structures and the values we wish to carry forward into this new frontier. Part 6, Modern Policy and Regulation, Navigating the New Space Age As we venture further into the new space age, the nascent realm of space law faces a barrage of novel challenges. Existing international legal frameworks, primarily established during the space race era, struggle to address the complexities engendered by current advancements in space technology and the influx of new actors in the space arena. The Outer Space Treaty of 1967, the bedrock of international space law, was conceptualized during an era when only two superpowers had the capability to reach outer space. Today, numerous countries and private companies have spacefaring capabilities. The rapid commercialization of space, marked by the rise of private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin, poses significant regulatory challenges. These companies are pushing the boundaries of space exploration, ushering in space tourism, planning colonies on Mars, and launching mega constellations of satellites. These initiatives raise questions about safety standards, liability issues, and the long-term sustainability of space activities. The issue of space debris represents a particularly urgent challenge. With the increasing number of satellite launches, space is becoming crowded. Non-functioning satellites, spent rocket stages, and fragments from disintegrations and collisions all contribute to the space junk encircling our planet. This debris poses a threat to both manned and unmanned space missions. The 1972 Convention on International Liability for Damage Caused by Space Objects provides a legal framework for damage caused by space debris, but there is a growing need for comprehensive policies aimed at debris mitigation and remediation. Ownership rights in space also remain a contested domain. The Outer Space Treaty prohibits national appropriation of outer space and celestial bodies, but it does not explicitly address the issue of exploiting space resources. The question of who can profit from mining asteroids or the moon is a contentious topic, with countries like the United States passing national laws permitting their citizens to own space resources. Furthermore, as our knowledge about the existence of celestial bodies with potential life expands, the policy of planetary protection takes on increasing importance. This policy, maintained primarily by the Committee on Space Research COSPER, seeks to prevent biological contamination of explored celestial bodies and Earth. As missions aim for planets like Mars, which might harbor life, stringent procedures must be followed to avoid contamination. Modern space policy and regulation must also consider the broader societal implications of space activities. Equity in space exploration is a growing concern, as developing countries risk being left behind in the race to exploit space resources. The digital divide could potentially be amplified to a space divide without proactive measures to ensure inclusive access to space benefits. Part 7 – Educational Impact 
The Legacy of the Space Race The space race left an indelible imprint on education, particularly within the United States, resulting in a seismic shift in the nation's approach towards science, technology, engineering, and mathematics (STEM) education. The launch of Sputnik in 1957 served as a catalyst for this transformation. The United States, stunned by the Soviet Union's early lead in the space race, responded not just with increased investment in space technology, but also with significant reforms in education. The underlying rationale was clear, the country's future success in space, and indeed its national security, would hinge on its ability to produce a new generation of scientists, engineers, and technically skilled workers. In 1958, Congress passed the National Defense Education Act NDA, which provided over a billion dollars in federal funding to improve American schools and to encourage students to pursue studies in science and mathematics. This represented a dramatic shift in national education policy, as it was one of the first times that the federal government had intervened directly in the country's public education system. The NDEA led to the development of new curricula, the provision of loans for students to attend college, and the establishment of new language and area studies programs. Simultaneously, new initiatives and organizations were launched to foster interest in space and science. Perhaps the most notable among these was the creation of NASA's Office of Education, which was established to develop and implement programs that would inspire students, engage the public, and disseminate information about NASA's goals and missions. Moreover, the space race instigated a shift in the portrayal of scientists and engineers in popular culture. Once regarded as mere eccentric, the scientists and engineers working on the space program came to be seen as national heroes, inspiring young students to follow in their footsteps. In addition to the immediate changes in the American education system, the impact of the space race on education has a far-reaching legacy. The focus on STEM fields stimulated during this era continues to influence educational policy today and has been instrumental in driving technological innovation and economic growth. The emphasis on scientific inquiry and hands-on learning and the pedagogical shift towards problem-solving and discovery-based learning are all outgrowths of this period. Moreover, the space race underlined the necessity for a diversified talent pool in maintaining technological superiority. It underscored the need to involve all citizens, irrespective of gender or race, in the scientific enterprise. This idea, although not fully realized during the period of the space race itself, planted the seeds for future efforts to broaden participation in STEM fields. Part 8 the environmental impact, weighing the consequences of space exploration. The advent of space exploration, while a testament to human ingenuity and curiosity, has not been without significant environmental implications. From the production and launching of spacecraft to the growing issue of space debris, the expansion of our activities beyond Earth's atmosphere has raised several environmental concerns that demand attention. The production of spacecraft and launch vehicles requires vast amounts of resources and energy. The construction processes often involve the use of rare and non-renewable materials, many of which are mined under environmentally destructive circumstances. Rocket propellants, particularly those used in earlier stages of the space race, were made from highly toxic and polluting chemicals, posing a threat to both terrestrial ecosystems and human health. Rocket launches, too, have environmental consequences. Every launch releases greenhouse gases and particulates into the atmosphere. Although the contribution of rocket launches to global greenhouse gas emissions is currently minuscule compared to industries such as transportation or energy production, the increasing frequency of space launches in the new space age could amplify this impact. Another significant environmental issue associated with space exploration is the proliferation of space debris. The number of artificial objects in Earth's orbit has grown exponentially since the launch of Sputnik in 1957. 
Today, hundreds of thousands of pieces of debris, including defunct satellites, spent rocket stages, and fragments from disintegration and collisions, orbit the Earth at high speeds. This debris poses a threat to both manned and unmanned space missions, and the problem is projected to worsen with the increased commercialization of space. The issue of space debris also extends beyond the immediate danger to space missions. Objects in low Earth orbit occasionally re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, and while many smaller pieces burn up upon re-entry, larger fragments can reach the Earth's surface, potentially causing environmental damage. To address these challenges, the international space community has initiated various mitigation strategies and policy discussions. Space agencies, companies, and organizations worldwide are investing in research to develop greener propellants, more efficient launch methods, and sustainable mission designs. Satellites are now often designed to be more energy efficient and to have end-of-life disposal plans, which typically involve deorbiting the satellite so it will burn up in the Earth's atmosphere or moving it to a graveyard orbit where it will not pose a risk to operational satellites. The problem of space debris has sparked interest in the development of active debris removal ADR, and in-orbit servicing IOS, technologies. Several demonstration missions have been launched to test methods of capturing and deorbiting defunct satellites or large pieces of debris. Furthermore, these environmental concerns have brought attention to the necessity of comprehensive international regulations governing space activities. While there are several international treaties and guidelines aimed at protecting the space environment, enforcing compliance remains a challenge, and the existing regulations may need to be updated to accommodate new technological developments and the increased presence of commercial actors in space. We've now reached the end of our journey today, thank you for letting the tales of old be your backdrop and remember, history isn't just about the past, it's about understanding our present and shaping our future.